Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's heartbreaking that even in the month of Ramadan, Boko Haram did not take a break from the campaign of terrorism and murder and wickedness against uh, civilians. Uh, the scholars of Islam and the students of knowledge of Islam have thoroughly uh, criticized and rebuked the actions of Boko Haram. Therefore, I'm going to focus on their philosophy, which is Western education is Haram. Uh, our elder statesman Dawood Adi mentioned in his lecture, History of the Salafi Dawah in America, that there was a group of Nigerians who were the first to publish literature uh, in the English language concerning uh, Salafism. And uh, members in Nigeria from this group broke off and they became Boko Haram. Uh, the man who uh, was the leader of this group, he believes that we live in a geocentric universe and the earth is flat. I don't know how he came to these conclusions or Boko Haram in general came to these conclusions, but they uh, are thoroughly against uh, scientific theories uh, in the modern day and unfortunately many Muslims uh, are scientifically illiterate not knowing that a scientific theory is an explanation of a fact or a series of facts such as Einstein's uh, theory of relativity which replaced Sir Isaac Newton's theory of gravity uh, which explains uh, uh, the movement of large bodies and, and how they uh, interact with one another uh, over over the se you know over several years, only one percent of scientific uh, papers and journals that have been published have been by Muslims. There are as many as one point six billion Muslims and as many as two billion. And there are only 15 million Jews worldwide, but yet there are literally more Jewish scientists from amongst those 15 million than there are from amongst the 1.6 billion Muslims. And uh, this is very disheartening. Um, some say the reason why that is is because of the corrupt regimes in the Muslim world, but one just can't blame it on the regimes. One has to take into account that there seems to be an atmosphere from amongst uh, Muslims in general uh, that's anti-science. One example of this is um, People who you wouldn't even uh, think would encourage Muslims not to be involved in scientific efforts like Dr. Bilal Phillips. He said Muslims should focus on things other than science. They should pr primarily be focused on Islam and let science be done by the non-Muslims in the observation of the natural world. And this doesn't make any sense. The natural world is the natural world and those observations are the observations. Uh, and as and as it is, we're already uh, dependent upon the non-Muslims for every aspect of our STEM. Uh, viruses evolve. So therefore, without any people getting into uh those related fields, then we'll be forever, when it comes to our meds, going to be dependent upon the non-Muslim. And as a matter of fact, it's a matter of uh, Muslim national security uh, to get into STEM because uh, it's not even the, just the great mercy of the West why Muslims haven't been attacked more than they already are. It's the, a fact that the non-Muslim world is dependent upon the oil which is found in Saudi Arabia and other Muslim countries. In fact, you may have heard politicians say in the past, uh, we're too dependent on foreign oil and we need to break our independence. Translation into layman's terms, the only reason why we haven't bombed the Muslim world and turned their desert into a glass parking lot is because we need their oil. 
and the oil is not going to last forever. So therefore, uh, Muslims definitely be able to need a comparable weapons technology to the non-Muslims. Uh, the only reason why uh, the non-Muslims were able to conquer most of the Muslim world in Africa is because of their weapons technology. And in fact, they even ridiculed uh, Asians and Africans for being backwards and almost animal-like. And in fact, there's like uh, this one story that was bragged about during the imperial age that they came in with their war planes and Africans were throwing rocks at the planes. Um, and Malcolm X was famous for saying that the Africans saw the devil incarnate, so they were willing to do anything to stop the devil incarnate. But it doesn't matter how much heart you have or how much man you have, uh, you're not going to be able to defeat uh, a war plane that, that has uh, stealth capabilities with rocks. You're not going to be able to defeat tanks and aircraft carriers with rocks. So therefore, uh, the, the step, step one of growing any empire is to build a military that's reckoned with or that can be reckoned with that's the only reason why hitler almost became the emperor of the world is because of his technology the japanese almost overnight went from being uh horsemen and swordsmen into being uh, a great military power but it's like we have to have comparable weapons technology with the rest of the world uh, so therefore, that's the only way the Muslims will be able to uh, defend themselves uh, and be able to wage in a, j a defensive jihad is if uh, Muslims are uh, skilled in uh, uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Because without it, then once again, they could take over. But uh, once... Uh, Hit the Nazis once they and the Japanese weakened the Imperial forces uh, in World War II and they decimated their air forces and their navy. Then, uh, for instance, we Nigerians, uh, we were able to drive the British out of Nigeria because all they had uh, mostly at their disposal was guns. And we had rifles by that time, too. So therefore, we had comparable technology and were able to drive them out. So um, that so therefore, uh, defensive jihad will not be able to be waged without STEM. There's no way uh, the bravest Mujahid will not be able to uh, wage an effective war against an unmanned drone because uh, they can be uh, manufactured at will but can uh, the Mujahideen produce people at will so therefore what Muslims need to do is put their children into and encourage them to go into science, technology, engineering and mathematics uh, just for sheer protection of ourselves from the non-Muslims. And also it just transforms the standard of living uh, for, for everybody involved uh, in, and for all of humanity uh, when people come up with new scientific uh, discoveries and uh, inventions. So therefore we Muslims need to be involved in that. We just can't be, uh, please uh, encourage your kids to become scientists, please, because we'll be left in a review mirror of history. So therefore, if the Muslims get into the sciences and then we'll be able to maybe even uh, lead the way into STEM. Saudi Arabia knows the importance of STEM uh, of the future economy. That's why they have... Uh, compounds that um, have a, a laboratory equipment that's advanced to uh, up bring in uh, foreign uh, scientists to help train their scientists of tomorrow and it only makes common sense at this point for a Muslim survival please get into STEM Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah
Find me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to my blog. Support my videos on Patreon.